Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. Drones at Oshkosh 2017. Suspected drone strike in Australia turns out to be a bat. Automated airspace authorizations coming. Hi, I'm Brie Cross. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. Without a doubt, it's the world's largest air show, and for several years now, the drones that you and I love to fly have been welcome among the many different types of airplanes, jets, rotorcraft, biplanes, and an impressive variety of flying machines that descend on Whitman Field every July. Some 10,000 aircraft, 550,000 people, and all manner of excitement crowds into a single airport in central Wisconsin, and this year dozens of UAVs ranging from government surveillance vehicles to the DJI Spark were there to be seen, appreciated, and discussed. This year, the drones had a large flying cage to work out of. Evening flight displays were conducted on EAA's Pioneer Field, FPV Racing, including the folks from Multi-GP was on display in the drone pavilion, and a number of sport and commercial UAVs were on site to be inspected and explained to an increasingly interested audience. AMA attended and held court throughout the week, offering sample magazines, info, advice, and membership while an extensive series of seminars detailed all manner of sport and commercial operations and how EAA members could partake in all of it. Topics included how drones are affecting aviation, drone and video photography basics, guide to choosing your first drone, waivers and airspace authorizations, drone racing has arrived, and dozens more. For an up-close look at all our unparalleled coverage of all things Oshkosh, including drones, do not miss our parent program, Airborne Limited, at airbornetv.net. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. The Deadwood City Commission has given initial approval to a drone ordinance that would completely ban drone flights over the historic downtown area and includes other restrictions such as no flights over schools, hospitals, public utilities, and other buildings. The ordinance would also preclude flights over people not involved with the operation of the drone, traffic, or property not owned by the drone operator without the consent of the property owner. A film crew making a video promoting Dutch Harbor, Alaska lost a drone recently during the filming when it was attacked by an eagle over the water. Drone operator Emmett Fitch was assisting the crew from Nevada with the shoot when his pilot suddenly lost contact with his aircraft, which was about a mile from the operator. He tried in vain to regain control of the drone and bring it back, to no avail. A person who allegedly flew a drone over the High Peaks Wilderness in the Arondack Wilderness area in June is due in court next month after being issued the first ticket for flying a drone in the area on June 17th. The man allegedly flew and landed a drone near the State Department of Environmental Conservation's John Brook outpost. He was observed by a forest ranger and ticketed. The charge was operating motorized equipment within land classified as a wilderness. As you may be aware, Airborne Unmanned is part of the Aero News Network's many news offerings that cover all aspects of aviation and aerospace. We're starting a search for an additional news editor, especially one with unmanned technology expertise, as well as the sales and marketing staffer to support our many news and feature programs. For more information, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. That was our Drone Minute, now back to the rest of the news. Where have we heard this kind of thing before? When a student pilot and instructor approaching Parafield Airport in South Australia felt something hit the wing of the Cicada Tobago aircraft they were flying one night, they initially thought they had hit a bird. But when the instructor examined the damaged right wing of the airplane after landing and did not discover any overt biological evidence, he called the tower and reported that he might have hit a drone. That got the attention of a lot of people and initiated an ATSB investigation and started another media frenzy. 
but it turned out to be something natural after all, not a bird, but a bat. According to the ATSB's final report on the matter, the ATSB conducted an inspection of the aircraft and swab samples of the impact area were taken by the airport operator and sent to the Australian Museum for DNA testing. The subsequent DNA test results indicated the sample was most consistently with that of a gray-headed flying fox from the bat family. The ATSB has assessed that there is little potential for the enhancement of transport safety through further investigation of this occurrence. The ATSB has discontinued the investigation. Greatly anticipated, it appears that this fall some 50 airports will begin providing low altitude authorization and notification capability, which will give UAS operators the ability to quote, apply for instant digital approval to fly in US controlled airspace using the same applications they use for flight planning and in-flight situational awareness. Currently, FAA authorization is required for flights in controlled airspace at certain times of day or near sensitive locations. Authorization requests are subject to long waiting periods and labor-intensive manual approvals, which can add more time to or entirely halt the process of commercial UAS operations. The FAA enlisted the help of 12 companies to evaluate how third-party vendors can help the administration provide automated authorization for safer and more efficient UAS operations at scale. AirMap co-founder Greg McNeil says that the LAANC project is the first step in the implementation of unmanned traffic management, which is the, quote, federated technological infrastructure that will facilitate data exchange and air traffic control for drones. LAANC began this summer with the FAA's release of UAS facility maps that show specific areas with altitudes near 300 plus airports where UAS operators can request airspace authorization more effectively and efficiently. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.